All right, welcome back to another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. This is the divisional round recap and the championship weekend preview. And I'm Brad. And I'm Hefe. And uh, we hope that uh, if you are listening to this, that you are watching this, rather, that you've already hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get an alert so you never miss an episode. Uh, we're working on some good things for um, the, the end of this year, but also for um, next season. And uh, we're, we're glad that you're around. We, we want to keep you around. So make sure you subscribe and you get these alerts. And uh, let's let's head into this, shall we? We and you'll notice that we're missing uh, another. Uh, we're missing the traveling horseman. We hope to get that rectified. Get schedules lined up. Um, Zach is not here. He has moved up north, so uh, he's up near the hubbub today. He's he's right down the street from all the excitement in Washington D.C. So, but we'll hope to get him back on here soon. We'll we'll tr- we'll try to carry Zach's weight. Um, if you've seen Zach, that's not going to be an easy task. Uh, <laughs> big man. So, all right, which game you want to start with, Hefe? Probably the Tom Brady Drew Brees game, right? Yeah. Let's. Uh, okay. I was I was filled with emotion during that game, man. And we talked about this, right? I mean, as a football fan watching that game, anybody who's a, who claims to be a football fan watching that game and didn't realize that you were either that you were both simultaneous I, I, maybe well you probably don't fall into this category you didn't want Brady to win did you yeah it's, it's been tough all year because I like the Bucks and I want the Bucks to win but I just can't bring myself to want Brady to win in the playoffs yeah well from from a football fan standpoint Brady wins and moves on to try to win another ring, a seventh ring, never been done before, with two teams, also never been done before, at his age, never been done before. There's all kinds of records that Tom Brady has to step on and smash to get to the Super Bowl. That's exciting as a football fan. As a football fan, you tell your grandchildren, you watch Tom, you watch Michael Jordan win six championships, you watch Tom Brady do this. On the flip side, um, if there was ever a quarterback that deserved another ring, it's Drew Brees. And I, and I would argue, I know you would too, I would argue that point with anybody. I don't care who you are. You can't bring an argument to me to convince me that Drew Brees doesn't deserve another ring. Um, there's always some kind of mishap that happens, in, in, which is part of football. But So watching the game, I didn't know who I wanted to win. I, I, wanted, I wanted both of them to win. I, I know it sounds like an eight-year-old, but – uh, but I did, and when Breeze lost, it was really, it was really disheartening, really to watch him walk out and know. But I do want to say, I looked a little foolish uh, about eight weeks ago when I pounded my fist and told you Drew Breeze wasn't coming back this year. That he had suffered eleven or twelve broken ribs and a collapsed lung, and he was he was, and he was too old to rehab that quickly. That he was not coming back. Right? I told you that. And guess what? He came back. Ah, he's fine. Well, you know what? I would lay money. He's permanently damaged. He can't throw the long ball. We saw they had to bring Hill in to throw the long ball. And and in the game against the Bucs, I I don't think he threw a pass over, like, what, 18 yards or something? And now he's walking away from the game. And the way he played this year, he's got another another year before he starts running in the ground. You know, he, he, he may come back next year and not play well. And then he'd say, okay, maybe it's time to hang it up. You know Peyton would have him back. For him to abruptly walk out of the game like he did after coming back so early and not being able to throw that ball, Breeze is broken. Yeah, he, it's hard to never, argue that. Yeah, they'll never tell us. But I'm telling you, man, you don't, you don't come back from 11 broken ribs and a collapsed lung and play – play an NFL game uh, well I mean he obviously did it he's a hard ass I got so much respect for the guy and I, and I don't think coming back early probably played in that fact I don't I don't want to, you know there's no conspiracy or anything I think he came back early he probably hurt like hell which uh, he took a couple shots when he came back that we talked about that here too that I can't imagine and if he was still wasn't healed I, I, it hurts even worse than I thought it probably did um, what a trooper, man, because you had everything in line. They were so good, and you got to have mad respect for the guy. But in the end, 
the magic man won. Brady's yep. moving on. Yep. And, and you know, while, while you talk about Breeze and him playing through the injury, you know, it's come out that Michael Thomas um, probably shouldn't have been playing. He wanted to come back, realizing that it was probably Drew Breeze' last chance at a Super Bowl run. Um, and he's already scheduled to be having surgery and whatnot. He's got to have a couple different surgeries on his ankle. Um, and he obviously had zero catches. So that, that definitely plays a part in that game. And, and I, I thought that the Saints, I mean, it, it seemed for a while, even in like halfway through the third quarter, that they were going to win that game. And then, you know, the, Drew Brees hits Jared Cook over the middle. And Jared Cook, while he was running, gets hit, fumbles the ball. And after that, that's where the turnover started happening. And it changed, it changed the whole game after that. Um, you know, and up until that point, it looked like Drew Brees was going to be able to go to the end. And not, not that I think that – I think Tampa has a better chance at winning in Lambeau than the Saints would have. I think the Saints would have lost that game anyways. Um, but, but it would have been nice to see Drew Brees at least try to win a Super Bowl. You know, that was my preseason pick. You know, I said I wanted to see Drew Brees get a regular season MVP because he never got one somehow. Um, you know, it would have been nice to see him get another ring. But that wasn't in the cards this year. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I, we also have to know that, you know, I mean, this is an elite club. And if I can sit here and tell you that I figured out from the distance I am that Breeze is probably hurt, everybody probably knew he was hurt. They watched the game film. They knew what he was doing or what he wasn't doing. They knew what the, Peyton was doing when he brought Hill in and this and that. Um, so it changes the way you play defense. If you know the guy can't burn you long, you can you can step up and, and – play some tight man to man and really frustrate him and 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 additionally if the guy's got broken ribs and he's afraid of taking a shot no matter I don't care how how much of a badass he is in the back of his mind the pressure is twice a, a, as intense as it normally would be because he knows he's got to get rid of it and when you play that tight man you're 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 in that tight coverage you don't give him the easy routes underneath cuz you know he can't throw over and then he's going to make bad decisions and it appears that, that what's happened now that I'm not an NFL coach. There's way more to it than that, but it. I just think if you had a healthy breeze, we'd be having. We might be having a different conversation, um, but but we're not. So um, Brady and the Bucks move on. We. I think. I think you and Zach and I all called the Bucks Saints as the NFC Championship at the beginning. That's right. Yep. Um, and we we and that's even Zach despite Zach being on the Packers train all year, he was the one who really lobbied for the, the Packers the hardest. Um, he still didn't have him in an NFC championship game. So if the Packers don't end up being as good as they ended up being for whatever reason, um, I think this was your NFC championship, but we can't dismiss the Packers. You want to slide right into the Packers? Yeah, let's get to it. The Packers, the Rams game was never in danger in my opinion. Dude, the Packers are the team to beat. Yeah, at least coming out of the coming out of the NFC, you know, and when I start to think about, you know, Chiefs, Bills, and, and who who would win that game, you know, whoever comes out of the NFC is going to have a really hard time winning that game down here in Tampa. Uh, you know, they, they're dangerous right now. There's so much talk in the offseason about, you know, Rodgers is going to have enough weapons to get things done. And here we are this year, you know, MVS – has had some problems dropping the ball. You know, that's been a bit of an issue. But he's great down the field. He can run past anybody. And Alan Lazard has looked like a solid number two all season long. They have a good running game. And that's going to be the key for the Packers here is going to be their running game. When they played Tampa in week six, uh, I believe they had like 18 rushing yards or 28 rushing yards, something, something like that. They weren't able to get going on the ground. So they're going to need Aaron Jones to have a big time game, which is probably going to happen. It's going to be a snowy day in Lambeau field. So yeah, it is. Um, yeah, that, I mean, you're talking about some Florida boys going up into Wisconsin. So, I mean, advantage Packers all day right there. Um, and, know, and even, like, even, I mean, Brady played all those years in New England, him and Gronk, but it doesn't, it doesn't take much to acclimate down here, does it? No, not <laughs> at all. I think we were down here for what, like four months before it started getting cold and we were already getting cold in 65 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember after, uh, Tyler and I being in the car and, uh, he'd only been down here a couple months and it was, it was at night and 
he said something about being cold and we looked at the thermometer on the car and it was 79 degrees and we laughed and I said, boy, it doesn't take you long. I said, you ever think 79 that you would think 79 degrees would be chilly? And he said, no. Uh, and so these boys have been here for a year. Um, it will be cold that no doubt about it. Do you, I know it's, is it supposed to be in the, is it the forties? 29. All right. So it's supposed to be 29. It's just below freezing. It could be worse. In Lambeau, it could be way worse, but it's going to be cold and it's going to be snowy. Definitely, definitely going to going to affect the game. Do you, do you think this will be a high scoring game or a low scoring game, Hefe? Um, you know, I'm not real sure. You know, the the Packers just played in a game with a little bit of snow this past week against a really good defense and were able to put up points. So while my instincts would tell me that this should be a low scoring game, I mean, you have two of the greatest quarterbacks that have ever played the game. There's no doubt they're going to put up points in this one. Yeah. And, and as far as the mentality, I'd like, uh, there's no doubt that Brady has a championship drive and he has the leadership. There's no, I, even if you don't like him, I mean, there's no doubt. Um, and he has a will to win and he has his team convinced they can win. But we've talked about this all year long. Aaron Rodgers is pissed off and has something to prove. And he has one ring. You don't think they brought, they, they drafted a quarterback. He's maybe his replacement, the writings on the wall, but Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, is not going to be replaced just yet. I mean, after the season, if, if they replace him, then there's no hope. But my point is, is that he's young enough to get pissed off and be better, right? At a certain age, you get pissed off and then you're trying real hard, but maybe you're not getting better. He's gotten better. I mean, he, he is in top form right now. Um, and you don't think that he knows he has one ring and Brady has six. And if that, if you don't think that will come into play this weekend, then you're sadly mistaken and not that that is going to be everything in this game but when you break down the leadership it's like a boxer right uh you you can match up in talent and skill but in the end if they're closely matched it comes down to who wants it more and right now I would have to say that Rogers probably wants this more for his legacy but we'll see that's why we're going to play the game we could be completely wrong but I'm going with the Packers yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Packers, too, for a lot of the same reason. You know, he, he's he been trying to prove all year that he's still got it. There were a lot of people doubting him. And, and you know, obviously the Packers take a first-round quarterback. This year has been all about proving the doubters wrong. And people want to say that Tom and Gronk and all them boys are going to go in there and, and get the upset this week. I expect Aaron and Devontae and Aaron Jones and all them boys to come out and prove them wrong this week. Yeah, as much as I hate to say it, because we're down here, and you know we picked up, we're Colts fans. We picked up the Bucks. We picked up the Dolphins because we're close. I'd love to see. I'd love to see the the. Uh, I say the hometown. You know what? What are we seven seventy miles from Tampa? We're right here. I'd yeah. love to see them win a Super Bowl in Tampa and break history. And they still could beat Green Bay, but I don't think it's going to happen. So. I've been wrong once or twice in my life. I think uh, probably about seven, seven or eight years ago I was wrong. And then once when I was like 13, but that doesn't really count. So, um, <laughs> uh, All right. So uh, let's talk about the Bills and the Ravens real quick. I expected that to be more of a game. And we, we talked about that last week. We thought this would be a really good game. And it was, it was pretty uneventful. I think the Ravens slowed the Bills down a little bit, but not enough. The Bills still the better team and, and got it done when it counted. But I thought the Ravens had a good effort, and uh, I just think the Bills – and so I guess my point is I don't want to take anything away from the Ravens. I just think the Bills are good. I, I'm, I'm sitting behind you on the wagon. I, I, I was impressed. Yeah, looked good against a really good defense. Like you said, Baltimore is able to slow them down. They're able to slow a lot of people down. They, they're just good on all levels on defense, but – you know, the we saw Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs still able to make magic happen, even in tight coverage here and there. And, and you know, my biggest takeaway from this game as a Colts fan was more so that the Colts should have beaten the Bills and could have beaten that Ravens team um, and should be in the AFC Championship. So, so that one hurts a little bit. Um, like you said, a, a pretty uneventful game. You know, the most exciting part of the game was obviously the 101-yard interception 
return for a touchdown uh, that really put it away kind of late, gave Bill 17 to three at that point. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see the Bills go to the AFC Championship. I think they have uh, a real good shot at going to the Super Bowl. I do too. And I'm, I'm going to restate that it, if there's an organization besides Cleveland – that deserves a Super Bowl, and maybe even more so, Buffalo deserves a Super Bowl. And for all the years that I hated Jim Kelly and Marv Levy and the Buffalo Bills because they dominated the AFC East and I was a Colts fan, I realize now looking back at what they accomplished was so remarkable and so great that I now I, I now feel terrible that I hated them so much and was so happy they didn't win. I wish they would have at least won one for the organization and for the city of Buffalo. So I'm 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 not above rooting for them. This they may be the team I root for. Um, if I had if I had to choose my favorites, I'd probably right now go with the Bucks uh, and the Bills in the Super Bowl. I'd like to to see that. But the Bills can't get there without uh, going through Kansas City. Now this the Browns game was a little closer than than I expected, but you know losing Mahomes is a huge deal. And we're we're not sure he's going to be available this weekend. Yeah, it's it's not you know it's up in the air right now. It's looking more like he's going to be able to. He was limited in practice today, but he's still in the concussion protocol. Um, but you know, a guy like Mahomes, money talks. You have to expect he's going to be ready to go no matter what the situation is by the time Sunday rolls around. I I thought that the Browns played a pretty good game. It, you know, that the controversy from the game is what everybody's talking about, right? Because that that's the game changer. That would have made the game a lot closer at halftime if, if they're able to get that touchdown rather than, than the rules saying that it has to be a touchback, you know. Um, just like most people, my opinion is that you put that ball at the one, and I'm a defensive guy. You know, I'm I'm all about helping the defense, but you put you put that ball at the one where he fumbled it. In my opinion, um, but that's not, not, to the not to mention not to mention the the controversy over leading with the helmet, the controversial hit. Is, yeah, yeah, that a hit. Yeah, and and I don't know how you missed that. You know, his arms when he went in, his arms were like curled up next to his chest. His head was the only thing going at him. So I, I don't know how the the judge right there on the sideline misses that one. Um, you know, because it even, I guess through a review, they probably can't throw throw the flag on that. But yeah. that that seemed like a pretty obvious call. But bang bang on the goal line, they didn't call it, and and because of Patrick Mahomes going out, the Chiefs kind of sputtered. You know, Chad Henney making a play on fourth and one late was huge for them. But the you know the Chiefs once again find a way to win a game somehow. You know, when, when it just yeah. doesn't look right for them, they just find a way to win. They've done it all year, and that's why they're in the AFC Championship again. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and very few teams just dominate all the way through. And we've talked about, you know, you need a little bit of luck to kind of go along with it. They've, they've gotten all that. And, and, you know, what are the odds? Chad Henney comes in to save the day. You know, a guy that I forgot even was – if you'd asked me, I, I would think – if you'd asked me, is he still playing a couple of weeks ago, I would probably said, well, I, he, he probably retired. I didn't even know he was he was backing up my home. So, but there's one thing for sure. I don't care who the Chiefs are. Chad Henning is uh, – Chad, Hen, Chad Henney is not going to outduel Josh Allen. It's not going to happen. No, not at all. Even in Kansas City, you know, the Bills aren't going to be surprised by any kind of cold weather they play in Buffalo. So so it's pretty much a clean slate. You know, the, the Chiefs are going to have some fans there. Um, but I just, I don't know. When when we talk about that matchup, just every, even if Patrick Mahomes is there. You know, I've, I've been on the Bills all year. I'm, I'm a Josh Allen fan, so – you know, it might just be because I want them to win, but I just feel like nine times out of ten right now, the Bills are going to be able to beat the Chiefs. This is not the same two teams that played each other in week six. No. No, and you have been on the Bills uh, all year long, even the preseason, and we, we debated that. Uh, I thought Miami would be better than Buffalo. And there's still a slight argument, but not much left in that argument at all. But, but I, I didn't see it. About halfway through the season, I started, I started thinking, okay, Pepe knows what he's talking about here. 
Not that I ever doubted you. No one should ever doubt F.A. I mean, I'm just going to say that right now. I'm calling the guru for nothing. With that said, I'm taking the Bills, man. I got this. I had this feeling that the Bills, this is their year. I, I had the feeling so much so that this is the Bills year that I think it's going to be the Bills and the Packers. And as of today, if it was the Bills and the Packers, I would pick the Bills. Now, I have a real problem, just like – I, I don't bet against Belichick. I got a real problem betting against Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl. But he only has one ring. You know, so some of that might be too. But I, I think I think that um obviously Kansas City can beat Buffalo. I'm not an idiot. Right. We both know we could both be terribly wrong on this and and and, and so much so that they could either team could run up the score against the other one. I I I don't know really what to expect. I just I have a gut feeling that we're looking at a Bills Packers Super Bowl. I think yeah, which is only fitting because you know when you look at Aaron Rodgers and you remember Aaron Rodgers in his prime, and you think about the things that Josh Allen's doing, and you think about what Josh Allen's going to be doing in two or three years as he advances in his career, and I mean you're lo- it's I mean the old the old guy bringing in the new generation, you know, and it's basically spinning it, spitting image of, of Aaron Rodgers pretty much. So, you know, it's a Super Bowl that, that nobody knew we wanted, but it's going to be a good one. And, uh, I think, I think we're both right on this one. I think Bill's Packers is, is going to be the one. Yeah. All right. So it, it's, it's formal. I mean, it's, it's in stone. You've heard it here. Both of us agree that, we uh we think there's going to be a Bills Packers Super Bowl, um, and speaking of the old guard and the new guard, I want to kind of slide in uh, real quick that we not only lost we lost two Hall of Famers this week, uh, the first one being Drew Brees, and and I don't want to hear any shit or any arguments. The second one being Philip Rivers, and I I, I told you before I, I I've never been a Philip Rivers fan. I, I couldn't stand him in San Diego. But I got to see the the other side of that, uh, you know, his competitiveness and his fire, um, the, you know, what they show you on TV and then what you perceive because, you you know, you don't like the team or whatever. I, I made a social media post this morning that I don't think people, but I think there are a lot of people in, in the Colts nation that don't understand exactly what this guy brought to this organization this year. They, they were in a position and could have won uh, every game. When, when you take a guy that's that age like that, uh, their skills diminish to some degree, and then every once in a while they just have complete flashes of brilliance that you remember them. So, But they're still playing above everybody else. Phillip Rivers played above everybody else this year, and every once in a while he pulled some shit out of his back pocket that you, you were like, there's the old Phillip Rivers. But aside from that, the things he sees, the things he's tell, telling guys in the huddle, watch for this, watch for that. I know this guy was doing it. And the conversations he's having uh, on the sideline with Reich, and he's pumping guys up and he's high-fiving, that stuff is invaluable from your leader. And I, I've seen it. We had guys like a guy like Jeff George, Rex Grossman. I mean, these guys, they were just unbelievably talented. They're just assholes that nobody could get along with. They weren't team players. They didn't have that fire. And Philip Rivers just added so much to this organization that there is a huge gaping hole in the organization today. And I don't care. You know how I feel about Brissett. I think he's, I think he's a great guy. I think he's a good quarterback. But I don't think he's, he's somebody you can build your future around. I think he's a good backup quarterback. I know that you're high on Jake Eason. But – even Eason can't come in and replicate what Rivers was able to offer this year. Eason's going to have to have some time to acclimate. Even if he's a starter from week one, I don't know that they'd have the success they had this year. Maybe, maybe the 10 and six range, maybe not. I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm really, I, people have beaten this guy to death all year. And I, I'm telling you, I can see it. We, we have a huge quarterback problem right now. And, I, I mean, Colts fans are so spoiled. Look at all the freaking hellacious quarterbacks we've had in the last 20 years. We're just so spoiled. And, and I know that we're spoiled, and now I'm terrified that we're not going to be able to replace that. 
So I just want to acknowledge that Rivers is now, uh, and I wish the Deuce were here so we could we could laugh about his 37 kids. I think we had a good laugh uh, on the, the show that Deuce did with us when we were laughing about Rivers and, and all of his kids. Um, I wish him the best. I, I wasn't ready for him to go. Now, I, I'll let you say some words before I say what I, before I add on the end of this. Yeah, so, you know, when I saw the, the Rivers news, I've always been somebody, you know, when Phillip Rivers had to play the Colts, I didn't like him because there was a couple times, you know, especially one wild card one year when, when Phillip Rivers balled out against the Colts and eliminated him. Um, but as a competitor, I've always been somebody that really likes that, that fieriness. You know, I, I like guys like Richard Sherman. I like guys like, like Phillip Rivers. And, and so when Phillip, Came to the Colts. I was pretty excited about it. I just wanted him to be a good quarterback. And and, and he was great this year. It was one of the best years of his career. Um, you know, he, he ended up with 11 interceptions, uh, which is still a little high, you know. Um, but, but overall, still one of the better years of his career. And I was, like you, not really ready to, to see him go. I was hoping he would come back and have a normal offseason with this group. You know, he, he had talked about how special – this team was, you know, everything that that went into this team bonding this year because of the COVID stuff and because of the the social equality stuff and, and everything that went on. I thought for sure he was going to come and and try to run it back one more time, you know, have that foot surgery and get one more season in. But unfortunately, he he's calling it quits. And like you, you know, there's. There's there's a lot of concern as a Colts fan. You know what are we going to do? Because I I know what Jacob Eason needs to work on, but without a real off season and him being the third person in line rather than just a natural backup, he hasn't really had any any real work this year. So he's going to need the off season to really work on the details of his footwork and his decision making, progressing through his reads the right way, and and so you know un. I would like to see him flourish, but but like you, we're going to have to figure something out for this year. They're going to have to bring somebody else in. Hopefully that's a Matthew Stafford kind of a guy rather than a Sam Darnold kind of a guy. But yeah, either because, way – Because we're, they're, they're primed to win. Uh, there, there, there's a window that is closing. I don't know how quickly or how slowly it's closing. I don't want to be overdramatic. But this isn't, this isn't put – Jake Eason in there and let him let him get two to three years under his belt because the dynamic will change that this team can win the whole thing right now with the right pieces and one of the quarterback now I have a theory you want to hear it what is it I have a theory that Frank Wright came to Philip Rivers and said we got somebody it would make sense right I hope so right I mean River, now Rivers just Rivers just said last week that he wanted to come back he just said that he wanted to come back. He's got a relationship with Reich. You just said he had the best year, perhaps, of his career. Things are gelling. Things are good. He's excited. And Frank Reich has a history with him, brought him in for a reason. He played extremely well. Everything's good. And suddenly now he's leaving. Somebody came to him and said, I'm having lunch with Matt Stafford tomorrow. I'm, you know, whoever I, I, I shouldn't, I mean, I was just making a point of, about, about him, but I, I really think this is a case. I, I really think this was a, I, it's been real good. I'm glad you're here. We appreciate everything you've done, but I've got somebody, I've got somebody that we can put in place and keep the next five years. I've got a franchise guy on the hook that will, will last me five years. I can build this around. And Philip Rivers has been in this game a long time. He knows that that's the solution. He knows he was the temporary solution. He was hoping it was two years. I think somebody came in and said, bro, we love you, but we got to let you go. And that's what we're looking at. So that's exciting. Yeah. And that, that'd be nice, you know, and, and I, I could definitely see it. You know, I, I have a lot of faith in whatever Chris Ballard wants to do. You know, he's built one of the best, young talented teams in the league over the last three drafts I, I mean the pieces that he's been able to pick up and Frank Reich and his coaching staff for coaching these guys up I mean there's so much talent so um, you know what, whatever he wants to do I'm behind it if he thinks Jacob Eason is that guy then I'll trust it but whatever quarterback he brings in except for Carson Wentz I'll, I'll be right behind it that's funny that you dropped Carson Wentz in there 
And look, let, let's reverse engineer what I just said. Yeah, knowing Chris Boward like we do, like, you know, I mean, we hang out at the beach every once in a while, right? I'm just kidding. We don't really do that. But Chris, you ever want to hang out at the beach? Look us up. Do, do you really think Chris Ballard and Frank Reich would just let Rivers walk if they didn't have it replaced? I mean, you reverse engine that. You walk that, you walk that backwards. That doesn't make any sense at all. Now, Rivers could have some personal things going on. His wife could have said, I changed my mind. I don't want you to do it anymore. He could have just been like, damn, I'm tired, and I changed my mind. I don't want to do it anymore. He certainly has earned that right with as many years as he's put in, and we know he wants to be with his kids. But you and I both know that that those rings <laughs> make a lot of noise. And if he, had, if he thought he had a shot to make another ring, it would have to be something tragic for him to walk away, and I hope that's not the case. So, But we just know – I don't care how good – Eason is, well, that might change the conversation, but Ballard isn't going to let Rivers go and put everything he's got on Brissett or Eason. It's just not going to happen. So there, there's something else going on behind the scenes here. And uh, I, I hope it's Matt Stafford. Anybody else? It'd be great to get <laughs> to Sean Watson, but it's projected right now that he's worth at least three first round picks. Yeah, they were trying to squeeze that out of Miami, which – is ridiculous. The whole Miami situation, I was talking about this the other day, the, the whole Deshaun Watson Miami uh, situation is, you know, they were trying to demand all their – they're trying to get their picks back is what they're trying to do because they screwed that up so bad and Miami's got all their picks. And they were trying to do uh, get Tua and the third pick and the 18th pick. And, uh, you, you know, Flores was just like, are you kidding me? Flores is in a nose-lose situation. He's got a proven veteran. He's got a, a, a high-talented, high-draft-pick rookie who hasn't had a chance to prove himself and, and has some experience. He let him get some experience. He's got a great defense. They're going nowhere but up. Everything's good. So what should he do? Sit back and let Watson keep running his mouth and let his stock keep going down, and then Houston has to dump him. And then he could probably swap to a straight up. Maybe, maybe throw the 18th pick in there. I don't know. That'd be worth that, right? You keep your third, throw your 18th, give two and your 18th away for a proven quarterback. I think that's smart. But there's no way Flores is going to – and he didn't. I mean, he was like, you're absolutely crazy. I don't, I don't know the Texans are going to get what they want. I think they're trying to just recoup all their losses. And I don't – do you think they're going to get all that? No, I think the only team that would give them that right now is the Jaguars because of how much draft capital they have over the next two seasons. But that's, I mean, they're going to the draft. Yeah. They're going to the draft for the quarterback. Yeah. And there's no way, I mean, the Dolphins need a little help on offense. They they need to go get a weapon. So that's what I expect them to do. They need, you know, an extra offensive lineman. I expect that to be the other first round pick. Um, so, you know, there's, I don't know there, I think we're going to see all this Deshaun Watson drama continue until, uh, probably like a month before OTAs, maybe even running into OTAs when Deshaun decides he's not showing up and, and then his price is really going to drop because then Houston's just on the hook for this guy that's not playing for him. So, you know, we'll, we'll probably can't even a team that can't even find a coach. I mean, nobody wants to go coach there. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've talked about Eberflus, you know, turning down an interview. I thought he, he had the, an interview before and, and got an offer, but declined the offer. Apparently, he was asked to, for the interview, turned down the interview, and then they pursued him like, you know, or later in the week, and he ended up interviewing with him. But no, they've interviewed, I mean, I think I've heard of six or seven different guys, just the people I've heard about getting interviewed, six or seven different people, and none of them want the job. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I, I expect this, uh, you, you called it right. You called it Watson drama. I expect this to get way worse for the Texans. They're going to hold on there. Uh, you know, it's like holding, <laughs> it's like buying stock and it goes up and it goes up and it goes up and you think it's going to keep going up and then it starts going down and you're just going to wait for it to go back up and it never does. And it bottoms out and you lose your ass. And I think that's exactly what's happened and it couldn't happen to a better organization. So with that said, I, I don't mean that. I, I apologize to Texans fans. It's it's part of the AFC South. I really, as much as I'm on one hand as a Colts fan, as much as I'm enjoying it as a football fan, it's really sad to see an organ organization mismanaged 
and all that talent and see the fans disappointed. You, you want your team to win, but damn, with as much money as in this and, and as much money as people spend to watch it, you want every team to be to imagine how awesome it would be if every team in the league were able to reach their potential, how awesome this league would be. Uh, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. And Houston, Houston's going to be at the bottom of the barrel for at least another couple of years, minimal two to three years, probably closer to three to five, uh, if not another decade. So they're in a lot of trouble. Lots. Yeah. And as Colts fans, you know, with the whole Andrew Luck situation, we kind of wasted his career away. You know, to see somebody like Deshaun Watson that's had so much promise since college. I mean, he he everybody knew he was a guaranteed start in the NFL. That's why Dabo Sweeney called him the Michael Jordan of football. I mean, he he was just he's always gonna make magic happen. And to see him, you know, his career flutter out to what it's looking like in Houston, you know, hopefully he can get moved to to somewhere that can win, you know, place like Place like the Bears. I've heard the Bears come up a couple times. I think that's an intriguing place. You get Deshaun Watson in there and they find a way to bring Allen Robinson back up there, then they look a lot better than they do last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I were Watson, I wouldn't want to go into that mess. <laughs> I don't think I would either. We saw – we and we talked about this in the first couple of weeks. I called what was going to happen with that quarterback controversy, and I and it destroyed them. It destroyed them, and they finally appear to have gotten that shit worked out. Quit messing with it. Go with Trubisky and see what he does for a year. Let him have it. Give him everything you have. Give him the rope and see what he does with it. He'll either hang himself or he'll make something, he'll MacGyver something out of it. But let him give him the opportunity to do that and quit screwing around and, and, and out coaching yourself. Anyway, I digress. So, um, I, and I would like to point out to our listeners, look, you just heard, you just heard us talk about, especially Colts fans. You just heard us talk about rivers leaving. And we talked about, um, uh, the quarterback situation and, uh, we, we've got more that we're going to talk about in the off season on this. Um, hopefully they don't beat us to it so we can run down all the free agents. Um, and, and, but I'd like to point out that there are major publications in Indianapolis that are saying that jo Jacoby Brissett's going to be resigned and take the helm. And uh, if you if you believe that, then I've got some land uh, I want to sell you in the South Pacific Sea. Uh, that's just not <laughs> he's a, he's a free agent. That ship has sailed. Let it go. If that is the case, I will rip Frank's Frank Reich's ass for the first time ever, and then sit back and pray to God that he proves to me how much smarter he is about the quarterback position I am. That Brissett becomes the next Aaron Rodgers, but I don't see it happening. I don't either. Kind of, kind of because, you know, what, what I mentioned about Chris Ballard, you know, I just have too much faith in, in his knowledge in the game and all the scouts that he has with them, the town evaluators. I mean, there's no chance that I, I mean, I guess maybe they bring him back like a last ditch effort. You know, you can't, score a trade to get anybody you can't get anybody you want in free agency maybe you bring them back for 10 mil but after a 25 million dollar contract you got to think that Jacoby's going to go somewhere and want to start and yeah I, I just I like Jacoby I think he's an okay quarterback uh, but I don't want him to be the starter of my football team no he's he's not the top tier and that's what this team needs this team this team is an elite team and they need an elite player at the helm uh, for sure. So, and we're going to go through that here in a couple of weeks. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about Sam Darnold. We're going to talk about Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, um, Carson Wentz, um, you know, Deshaun Watson. I don't know if they're talking about that. They're, they're not going to let him come. Well, I don't know. They might let him come to another division team. I don't know. Um, I've seen crazier things. Um, but Dwayne Haskins, uh, Trubisky, Win J J James Winston, uh, Andy Dalton, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I mean, Dak, there's a whole long list of quarterbacks that are going to be available. We'll run down who we think, where these guys, we think these guys will end up. And then as, a, as Colts fans, we'll talk long and hard about whether they fit in the organization. We'll let you know all that. I just wanted to point out to our listeners that there are people that get paid a lot of money to write stories and give their opinions. And these people are telling them that Jacoby Brissett's going to be their next quarterback. So, if you have friends who are reading this nonsense and repeating this nonsense, you need to send them this video and tell them to subscribe so they can get the lowdown. 
because uh, we will never lie to you or steer you wrong, will we? Never. <laughs> never, never, never. All right. So uh, any, anything you want to throw in before we, uh, before we wrap this up? Not really. I think we, we covered pretty much all the bases. You know, there, there are a lot of coaching hires that, that will go over uh, probably during the off week, I would think, is probably something we'll, we'll talk about during the off week here. You know, we got the virtual Pro Bowl. Um, that, that's going to be a little weird. Um, but other than that, you know. Did you, say a li- be- did you say a little weird? A little weird, yeah. I think they're playing weird. it on Madden, though, and, and I play Madden, so okay. it'll be kind of cool. All right. Uh, you know, but but we have, I mean, two of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play are playing against each other this week. Two of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL are playing against each other this week. So it's going to be an amazing Sunday. So have fun and be safe. Yeah, 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 for sure. And again, just to recap, we have, Hefe and I have called a Bills Packers Super Bowl with the acknowledgement that we could be completely off because there are, like Hefe said, four amazing quarterbacks and four really good teams. Any four of these teams, this is what it should be. Any four of these teams can win this weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So um, with that said, we're going to wrap wrap this up for, again for this week. Remind you to please show us uh, some love and like, share, and subscribe. Help us get the word out. Uh, tell all your friends. Make sure you forward it to the people who are repeating that Jacoby Brissett nonsense. Again, you can follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook at Horseman's at Horseman Sports. We'd love to see you there and interact with us there. We'd love to hear everything you have to say about what we have to say, uh, unless it's you know super critical. Then uh, go tell somebody who cares because we don't. And uh, until then, uh, we'll see you next next uh, Tuesday, right? Hopefully, yes, sir. we're getting this one out late. We, we've had some technical difficulties, but we'll be back here next week where we'll talk review the AFC and NFC Championship the week and uh, talk about the upcoming Super Bowl and we uh, our special guest is coming up so uh, until then thanks for joining us enjoy the games deuces